I'm David Moster, the director of BiblicalCulture.org, and I'm going to speak to you about the Samaritan Pentateuch, one of the most fascinating texts in all of biblical studies. Now, the Pentateuch is the first five books in all Bibles. It is called the Torah, the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. And there is a group of people called the Samaritans who today live in Israel in a city called Cologne or in Mount Gerizim in the West Bank. And this group, the Samaritans, have been around for thousands of years. They are mentioned in the New Testament, and we even find texts related to their texts in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Samaritans are best known for worshipping on Mount Gerizim, which is near Shechem or Nablus. But they are also known for their Pentateuch, their Torah, which is called the Samaritan Pentateuch. And this has been passed down from generation to generation until this very day. What makes this text so important for biblical studies is the comparing and contrasting with the Pentateuch in the Jewish and Christian Bibles, which is known as the Masoretic text because it was handed down by a group of people called the Masoretes. Now there are hundreds of variants between the Samaritan Pentateuch and the Jewish and Christian Pentateuchs, and I'd just like to tell you about a few of them in their general categories. The first major variant is the script. While in Hebrew, the Jewish and Christian Bibles use a square script, the Samaritan text uses the more ancient Hebrew script, sometimes called Proto-Hebrew or Canaanite or Ancient Israelite script. <music> Moving on, the next kind of variants have to do with spelling, usually vowels. So these are not really a big deal. For instance, in American English, we spell the word color, C-O-L-O-R, color. But in British English, it's spelled C-O-L-O-U-R. And so what we see here is a difference in spelling of the vowels, but we all know it's the same word, not a big deal. And there are hundreds and hundreds of these cases throughout the Samaritan Pentateuch and the Masoretic Pentateuch. Moving on, we can talk about grammar. The Masoretic texts of the Jews and the Christians often have cases that are not grammatically correct. But when you look in the Samaritan Pentateuch, they are grammatically correct. Many of these have to do with gender. In Hebrew, the, the verbs are either male or female. And the Samaritan Pentateuch makes sure that the male verbs are male and that the female verbs are female. So that's a different type of variant, but one that doesn't really change the meaning all that much. The next type of variant has to do with scribal errors. Anytime a scribe copies a great giant text such as the Pentateuch, there are going to be a number of cases of error, especially ones that the scribe misread a word and, and copied it down in the wrong form. In English, this might happen with a letter such as a C or an O, which look very similar. Often you can mix them up on those I exams. In Hebrew, we have examples such as chorev, the chorev with a bet, which means heat, got mixed up with choref, choref with a pay, which means winter. And that's a big difference between heat or winter. Just one little letter can make all the difference. Perhaps more interesting, there are some cases where we can tell that a scribe didn't make an error because he was looking at the wrong letter or he misinterpreted a letter or a word. Rather, the scribe had made an oral mistake, that the scribe had memorized the biblical text, and when he was copying that biblical text, he mixed up two synonyms. So, for example, in English, there are two synonyms, boy and lad boy and lad. And those exact synonyms are mixed up in the Samaritan and Masoretic text. So that one text has the word yeled, boy, and the other text has the word na'ar, lad, and they're pretty much the same thing. You might split hairs and say one is different than the other, but what really happened is that the scribe was thinking in his own head what the text should be and wrote it down. Now I've been speaking about variants that are either mistakes or not really that important, but moving on we start getting to bigger variants in terms of meaning and significance. So for in one example I would like to show you what we studied in our institute about the Shabbat, the Sabbath. Lorraine, could you please read Genesis 2 too? Seventh day, God finished the work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work 
that he had done. Okay, so on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, right? And then he rested on the seventh. That implies in a certain sense that God was working a little bit on the seventh and then he finished. Right. Right? God was, it implies, I, listen, is it a huge implication? Not necessarily, but in the Hebrew we have, Michael, and what do we have? In the Hebrew here we have Bayom HaShavii on the seventh day. What do we have in the Samaritan Pentateuch? Bayom. Here, if you could help me. Uh, Bayom. Uh, Bayom hash, hashi, uh, hash, Good. Hash, hashishi. Good. Hashishi. Good. Hashishi. Yeah. yeah, excellent. On the sixth day. So in the Samaritan version, no, it's not that God, <clears throat> it's not that God finished on the seventh day. Is that God finished on the sixth day? Okay, that makes more sense to me. Now, <laughs> on each one of these, okay, so this time we got we got Gene, we got him. But in each one of these, you could argue which one was original and which one was not. But I'm presenting in this case, I think that that the Samaritan was probably a fix up of the other one. Okay, let's go on to. No, 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 you're missing the. Tell me the point, Gene. Tell me the point. No, the, the people have always argued. Well, did he rest? Did he work on the seventh day or not? But the Samaritan makes it clear, no, he finished on the sixth day and rested on the seventh day. That right. makes much more sense. Right. They're taking, that's an exegetical point, is that it's very clear. There's no gray zone here. Okay? Right. Good. And this is an important difference when we're talking about how to read one of the most important chapters in the entire Bible. <music> Moving on, we have larger variants. And many of these have to do with quotations. So, for example, the book of Deuteronomy is in many ways a summary of the first four books of the Pentateuch. So, in Deuteronomy, when Moses says, Oh, I said so-and-so, in quotations, I said so-and-so, you would expect that that would be written somewhere in the first four books. But in the Masoretic text, the Jewish and Christian Bible, you often don't see that. But the Samaritan text fills that in and makes sure that when Moses said, I said dot, 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 that this is found in the book of Numbers, in the book of Exodus, so that you can point and say, Moses said dot, 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 right here in the book of Numbers or the book of Exodus. And then finally, we come to the most interesting of all the variants, and that is what we call sectarian, meaning they are what divide Jews and Samaritans from each other, or Jews and Christians from Samaritans. So, in the Masoretic text of the Jews and Christians, there's no mention of where God will pick as his holy city. And this eventually, as the Bible unfolds, will be Jerusalem. However, for the Samaritans, God has already chosen his city, and that city is Mount Gerizim near Shechem slash Nablus. And the, in the Ten Commandments, there's even a commandment to worship on Mount Gerizim, which is unheard of in the Pentateuch of the Jews and Christians. So what I've done here is highlight the different types of variants that you can study on your own. And if you want to do so, there's a really interesting book that came out recently. It's called the Israelite Samaritan Version of the Torah. And it was written by Binyamin Tzedakah, my Facebook friend, which is pretty cool. And what he does is he shows you on every single part of the Pentateuch, two columns. One column is the Jewish Christian Masoretic text and the other column is a Samaritan text. And what he does is he tells you the differences between the two, either by highlights or by omissions or by additions. So now we know what the Samaritan Pentateuch is. If you enjoy studying things such as the Samaritan Pentateuch, why not take our Samaritan Pentateuch class at biblicalculture.org or study something else with us where you can study with fantastic instructors and learn all kinds of things like the Samaritan Pentateuch. So I hope you learned about the Samaritan Pentateuch. I would really like to see you in a live class at biblicalculture.org, and I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next video.